This is video number six, and we have a lot to accomplish in this video. I'd like it to be a, a running and driving chassis. So uh, I've been messing around with it already. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of key measurements here. Um, so my thinking was I wanted to work on the steering. I wanted to put in the steering shaft and put on a steering wheel. And so I realized I needed to really get the positioning right. I needed a seat. So I worked on the seat, and I'll show you this in more detail, but basically that's uh, three inches of foam, and then there's a one inch plywood deck that holds it up, so that's four inches, and then the seat back is uh, two inches plus the half inch back, so two and a half, and then uh, I gave it a little bit of contour, you can see it's narrow at the bottom and wider at the top. Uh, so I can accomplish two things by having the seat in here. I can get the pedals, which I installed, at least uh, got them installed, don't have any cables or rods yet. But I can use the seat to get the steering wheel where I want it and make sure I got the pedals right. So if I set this here, I'll show you a couple of measurements. Okay, so... So a couple important measurements. So from the floor to here, you want 18 to 20 inches. And I'm at uh, 19 inches. But you also want from the seat back to the dash around 27. And I'm right at 27. That gives you room to climb in. Um, for my height, I like the pedals to be 40 to 43 inches from the seat back. So right now, they're at 40 inches. Back half inch plywood glued on and then the seat bottom just like I've done my other half inch, half inch and then the fabric wraps around and staples here so that'll work okay I'm working on the steering now and uh, so you can see, uh, I have this uh, plastic rod here, it's lightweight, and uh, it represents the steering shaft. So the steering wheel will be here. Uh, so out of some uh, poster board, I made a couple of brackets. This is easy to cut up and bend. And it's the pattern for uh, a bracket that'll be eighth of an inch thick bend around it'll weld down here weld here this represents the angle generally pretty close anyway and then this this I'll bend this tab to meet that angle so uh, now I have to to fine-tune this bracket and this bracket and uh, get them made out of, out of steel so I'm moving along and uh, the uh, the um, pitman arms, they'll be right about here. So if I use, just bear with me. Okay. So I used uh, some little pieces of aluminum to extend the uh, spindle on both sides so that I can ultimately get this dialed in because the pitman arms will hang down and then the heim joints will be right here and that's you want that all on the same plane so I'll be able to fine tune that so I've been concentrating on the two uh, steering shaft brackets this is the one that goes at the dash um, this is a poster board that I picked up over at Walgreens then these are little bushings uh, 5 8 diameter inside, 3 quarter outside, and so uh, in the steel that'll fit in like this, and then the other one, the front one, same thing, it'll fit in like this. So anyway, I use this for my pattern, I've transferred it to the piece of steel, I've drilled the hole, bushing fits in there. I still have to make this one, but uh, this is how it's going to all go together. Let's see. So this is uh, like this. 
So that'll be in there like that. So you can see how that will that will work. Then this uh, locking collar will be right up against it. Hold it tight. Then hit the hind joints will be welded on right there. And then on this other end, this will come down from under the dash. And then that locking collar there will keep it in place. So that, that'll be nice, smooth, no rattle. Uh, these, uh, I got these at Ace Hardware. They were three or four bucks a piece. You could probably find them cheaper, but very important. Otherwise, it would just rattle and make a bunch of noise. So um, I'm going to uh, cut this with the bandsaw, and then uh, here's the line where I'll bend it over. I'll put it in the vise and pound it into submission. I have to drill some holes first. So I'm getting there. This one will be a little bit harder to make, but there's the pattern. I managed to get a little more work done on this steering setup. So uh, I uh, made the steel bracket that goes right here. It's eighth inch steel, got it all welded in. And uh, I just have the uh, tie rods just sitting there resting. They're not attached yet and of course the uh, Pittman arms they're still loose I haven't welded those yet but I've got the uh, bronze bushing in there and then uh, I got this bracket finished and I got the bushing in there with the locking collar. I have to cut this shaft to length uh, I'm waiting on the, a quick disconnect coupler that I'll weld on here after I cut it to length that I'll put on the steering wheel. Here is the anatomy of the uh, radius rods that I'm putting together. So I did a little sketch uh, showing uh, kind of how I wanted to put it together. And so uh, it starts with these uh, little brackets and then I, I welded on this threaded rod and then this tube, I have it notched right here so it'll slip over like so. Uh, these are here just to make the make it look a little more substantial. Anyway, I'll weld this right here, and then uh, the nuts go on the hind joint, and then this will be the bracket that welds the frame. So here's the whole scenario. I haven't welded it yet, but you can see how it's going to come together. I need to I need to bend this tab to the appropriate angle. And that gets welded to the frame. And then I'm going to weld it right here and weld it here so that'll be nice and solid and then this will allow me a little adjustment. So next uh, thing to do is uh, weld this together and get it installed on the cart. I mocked up the radius rods here and I'm clamped in place. I've got to finesse that angle just a little bit but uh, almost ready to get welded in. Before I weld them, I want to put a, a block in here on both sides and get this nice and s square to the frame. But, uh, I'm happy with this so far. I think it'll work. Okay. I received my quick disconnect fitting from Speedway Motors and uh, I installed it on the steering wheel blank here. I still have to uh, you know, the shaft is way too long. It's got to get two or three inches cut off of it. But uh, you can kind of get a feel for what's going on here. It looks nice. Yep, it needs to be a little closer to the dash. Okay. So it won't be long before I'll have the steering finished. I'm going to put in those radius rods and then I'm going to get the, t the tie rods uh, hooked up. Got to get them spindles extended. But uh, this looks good with the steering wheel on it. I just about have the uh, radius rods installed. Um, I'll show you what I did here. So I clamped this piece of steel in here. That squared up the axle. 
this blue piece of tape here and over here, that centers the axle uh, uh, to the frame. So now I have it spaced properly in two directions and uh, it's nice and plumb and true to the frame. So then uh, back here I decided to, to bolt these this bracket on for now. And uh, then I've also tacked it on. So I still have to finish weld, and then I haven't welded it up underneath yet. But I have both sides tacked on, and I'm going to take the clamp off, and I think it'll be all right. Then I can uh, get it up on the sawhorses so I can get underneath it and finish uh, welding it off. Okay, so now my focus is going to be on the steering. Uh, so I blocked the cart up here. And I have the tie rods resting on uh, some little tabs that I taped on to the spindles. So i got to get the length of those correct. And uh, so far it looks good. It's fairly level. Um, and then, let's see here. And I've got to weld on some tabs here. And then uh, I need to <coughs> weld on the pitman arm. And I need to cut this steering shaft to length. So that's going to that's gonna be my effort for this afternoon. Okay, I've made some progress on this steering here. So uh, I had installed the steering wheel on the quick disconnect. And now I've, I've welded the quick disconnect hub. I welded it here in the end and around here. So now that's all finished. So let's put this back on. Okay. And then I also uh, welded the pitman arms. They're still a little warm. They're tacked on right now. I can finish welding them later. But uh, you can see we have action here. The tie rods... Uh, aren't hooked up yet. I still got to work on these spindle brackets. Um, but uh, you'll notice the pitman arm points straight down. That gives you right left when you turn the steering wheel. And then uh, another thing I did was uh, I centered up the steering wheel, carefully stood back, looked it over, measured it, got it centered just where I wanted it. And then I made sure the pitman arms were pointing straight down, nice and plumb. Then I welded it up. So that way the tie rods, in essence, will be of equal length. So this is where I have to make a new bracket. And I can bend this bracket so that it'll be just the right height that I want for these rods. Okay. Boy, getting close. Okay, I got the steering finished up here. Looking like it's going to work fine. I added some little uh, stops. Because it would, it would continue to rotate and get to where it would bend the tie rod. I extended the, welded on some tabs. Still got to clean them up, but they're working pretty good. Okay, I put the front wheels back on. I got a steerable machine now. One step closer to a driving chassis. So I've managed to finish the front suspension. I have the tie rod or the radius rods installed. I have the tie rods installed. The spring, the panard rod. Everything's looking good. Steering works. All right. And then you can see where I added some stops. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. So now I'm going to focus on getting the engine installed and the brake and the foot pedals, the uh, throttle, 
And uh, at that point, I could drive this thing. So I'm going to work on that this weekend, see if I can get that motor mount built. Okay, it's time to move on to the motor mount and the brake. So I got the card in here where I can weld on it, and I'm going to work on the platform that the motor plate mounts to get all the spacing right. Here's my concept for the motor mount plate. I've been roughing out some ideas. But this is what I've decided on. So the uh, bottom plate is going to be quarter inch steel with some half inch tube that supports it. And then there'll be some three quarter inch tubes that connect to the front and rear frame. And uh, which accepts the motor mount plate which is quarter inch. So as it turns out I have uh, some of all this material so I'm going to get to cutting and try to lay this out. And then over here on the cart I clamped a piece of plywood underneath it. So now I can lay all the components in there, dry fit them, get them cut to size, set the motor on there, shift everything around until I'm real happy with it, and uh, you know, get the measurements just right. I need to put this uh, torque converter on this engine so I can lay out my uh, engine mount. So, start right here. We use this, the center bolt holes for the angle that I like to use. Of course, this could be at any angle that you want, but this is my preference. Maybe 10 or 15 pounds of torque. Equal. Okay. So, that establishes the angle I want. Then, uh, this is an important little spacer that has to go on the shaft here, which allows this piece to line up correctly. And there's a key here to match the keyway. So that goes, whoops, like this. Okay, then this uh, little copper brass piece is important too. And then you have the clutch mechanism. This has got to be down in the bore. Like that. Okay, so now we put on the belt this side to engine. flush right there. Snug it up good. You can also use a strap wrench to get it good and tight. So, that'd be a way to go. Okay, so that's how you install a torque converter. Here's the mock up of my motor mount. Here's the three quarter inch, three quarter by three quarter tubing. 
quarter and uh, quarter plate and half by half tubing. And then here I finished making the motor plate, quarter inch steel. And then uh, I opened up the bolt holes here uh, to three eighths, so I could use a little heavier bolt. So, uh, all right, now I uh, just got to get it to fit inside the frame. Got all the pieces made. Trying to get this motor in just the right spot takes a little bit of brain work. So I uh, have been trying a couple things. I, I put a chain on it. And uh, that's the location that I want it to be. So then I had to make sure that, you know, when I bring the body around, there's going to be a post here in the corner. So uh, I'm going to change this to a K&N filter, which will be down low and behind that corner post. And then right here, this will be changed to a header, which will turn and come out, and it'll be beyond this corner post. So uh, that's important for the body attachment at the rear. And then, uh, you know, this will end up being just right there, but that'll still work. And then uh, there's adequate room here for me to make a bracket and put the caliper right there. Okay, so from this, and then I've, I've made some marks down in there so I can lay out where the center four inch pl plate mount goes. So that's my next goal here is to get the pattern right and get it cut to size, and then I can weld it in. I made a little pa uh, pattern out of some construction paper, so a little work with the scissors, and I'll, ha I'll be able to transfer it to my steel plate. Tonight I decided to focus on the bracket that holds the caliper, and uh, pretty simple two-piece arrangement, and uh, I have room to adjust the screw, and it's inside the caliper, the disc is in there pretty good, so I'm happy with that. The, uh, the rod will come through the the bottom of the tub right under here so that's good that'll come out below this cross rail yeah maybe that'll work out all right here's the anatomy of uh, the brake rod I'm gonna make 
So I'm going to take quarter inch rod and I'm going to bend it at 90 degrees. I'm going to thread the end with quarter 20. I'm going to weld on a washer. This will go through the foot pedal and uh, be located with the nut. Then I'm going to use some quarter inch rod and I'm going to weld on a tab here for a return spring, a fairly stout spring, and a screw into the metal side rail, frame rail. Then there's going to be some uh, brackets. I'll probably use angle iron to make those, two or three of them. And then at the end, there'll be a clevis with a fine thread, quarter 28, that I'll thread the end once I cut it to the length. So here's the rod, and then I'll weld on the washer, and there's a nut, and then uh, once it's cut, cut to length, there's a clevis. Okay. I'm uh, turning the threads on this quarter inch rod here. I've got a quarter 20 uh, die here. So I spin it a couple times around, then I go back, clean the threads, and continue on. I have a mark down here, uh, down where I'm going to weld the washer, so I'm going to spin the thread down to there. I'm all set up to weld this little washer on here. So I'll weld it into submission. So when you uh, build a chassis that's, uh, say, a straight tapered chassis as opposed to this curved one, uh, when you do a brake rod, it follows right down the line of the chassis. Uh, it's a straight shot to the uh, caliper. So uh, it's pretty much what I'm doing here. Uh, that means this rod is going to be exposed uh, pretty much where your feet are. So I'm trying to minimize the impact of that. But I have it uh, almost cut to length and I have the basic shape established. Now I just got to uh, make some brackets. Uh, I'm going to have a bracket right up here to support this. And then another one here and here and there. Maybe even one underneath you know, attached to this cross member here. I don't know. Okay, so anyway, I'm figuring that out little by little, but I, I got the nut and the washer on there, so that that setup works looks good, and then it uh, actuates just fine. You know, for the brake, about that much travel is all you need, because you can set it up to where the pedal barely moves. Uh, unlike the throttle, where you need a lot of movement, so, okay. A little bit more challenging this way, but I can figure it out. And I'll have to modify the seat, too, underneath so the rod can go under the seat. So It's always something. Here's the uh, lever coming off of the caliper. And so now I need to get the rod to the right length. So the arm is all the way back, and the pedal's at its normal position. So I've determined that... Uh, this line here will be where I'll cut it to length, and then I'll thread it to this line, which will give me plenty of travel within the range of this arm. Um, this will be a quarter 28, a fine thread, and that's only because that's what this clevis is. That's got a quarter 28. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get that knocked out. I'm feeling pretty good about this uh, cart here. Uh, I've made some decent progress and I'm almost ready to test drive. I managed to get the brake rod put in so the pedal's now functional. It's got its spring and the brackets. It goes uh, underneath the seat. Nice low profile. Back to the caliper and disc. You can see the clevis down there. I've also installed the chain. The motor, motor is bolted down. I have locking collars in place. Uh, so, uh, let's see. If I just had a throttle cable, I'd be driving this thing. 
I ordered that thing, geez, a couple of weeks ago. I wonder what the hell's going on. Anyway, a couple of days more and I'll have it running. Looking forward to that. My throttle cable finally arrived, so I've been working on the system. and I have it all installed, clear back to the throttle arm on the engine. So let me show you how I put it together here. Okay. So it's a piece of uh, quarter inch rod. This came in the kit. I trimmed it to length. It's about uh, 12 inches long to here. Um, I rebent it at 90 degrees and I uh, put a quarter 20 thread here and I welded a washer back here. This is a temporary nut. That'll be a stop nut. Then I welded uh, a piece of the same rod on here to create a hook for the spring. There's a self tap and screw into the steel frame. And then uh, here's a, an eighth inch steel bracket. Um, and uh, this measurement from here to here is two inches and that gives you full throttle travel. Uh, now the way you can do adjustments is through this one by two, this is a piece of one by two scrap that I had laying around. So these two nuts lock it onto the shaft. This spring cushions the pedal as you push the full throttle. And then this allows you to put the cable in through a little hole here. So that allows you some adjustment here to get things just right. And uh, then this bracket here, the placement of this bracket from here to here determines how much of this cable will stick out of the end, the other end of this sheath. So if that's at one and a half, you'll have a couple inches sticking out of the end which will allow you to hook to the throttle arm uh, with plenty of length. Um, then uh, I also made this this little piece here. It's going to be challenging here to get this in here. It's kind of a safety feature. See this this cable here, if for some reason the cable came disconnected at the other end, this, this will just pull right out. So um, if the throttle return spring ever failed on the other end, this could uh, remain out here and the, you know you couldn't turn you know turn the throttle off. So um, I added this little piece of aluminum here. So this will bend and crimp around and it'll keep that uh, stationary to the end of this bracket. See, uh, you, have, you have two springs. This spring here, which controls the pedal, and uh, if this stays snug without this, uh, then that would stay tight. And then you have a spring at the engine. So if that ever, if either one of them failed, this cable will remain attached at this location. So uh, it should allow you to turn the throttle down. It's a redundancy feature. So seems complicated, but it's not. It's easy to make. Okay, so then uh, moving on here. Then the cable exits out and has these little cable things, you know, they get those at the hardware store. And then it exits right through the body, which is underneath the steel frame rail, and then on up to the engine. So I'll show you that next. Before I show you the connection at the engine, I'll just show you this from a couple more angles. You can see the throttle cable coming up from underneath the tub, and this is where it's going to mount. This fastener right here, which will hold the cable in place, needs to be moved from this location to this location, and then the cable will attach over here. Next, I remove this throttle arm here. So I have loosened this nut, I have to remove the spring, and then underneath here, the uh, governor springs, there's a couple you have to unhook. So you want to mark where those go, because you know, later it'll have trouble figuring out which hole they hook into. So anyway, I want to remove this so I can fashion the cable connection over here. Here's what I'm uh, going to do to attach the cable to the throttle arm. Um, you know, the uh, throttle cable comes with this small little attachment, but it's just not robust enough. So I developed my own method of attaching the cable. And uh, this is the diagram of how I put it together. 
So here it is made up. So uh, it's a quarter 20 by one inch bolt then a stop nut, a couple washers and another stop nut. And then you drill a 332nd hole for the cable. Now if I take this cable out, so the idea of the stop nut is so that right here this will spin. So you tighten this stop nut almost snug and it allows the the bolt to, to rotate. So that stays put and then of course after you put the cable through here you tighten this stop nut down and everything stays put. It's nice and robust, easy to adjust. A couple of uh, 7 16 inch wrenches and you're in business. I also drilled a hole let's see here right here where I'm gonna attach a throttle return spring I'll show you that in a minute but uh, this will ultimately um, hang, bear with me here ultimately sit here like this you see right in line with the cable so you can see how that's gonna work so here in a minute I'll have it all put together and then the return spring will go through here and attach over here. Okay, here it is all put together. You can see the cable comes up, hooks to the clamp, then goes between the two washers and through the, the 3 30 seconds hole in the bolt. And then I used a 7 16 wrench to tighten them up, so that's nice and snug. And then the spring, you can see the return spring there attached, coming over here to this bracket. Okay, well this, this bracket is a uh, actually a uh, old shelf bracket I had laying around. It's steel, so uh, eighth inch steel, so it made a decent bracket. And as it turns out, Right here in the engine, there's a, a threaded boss uh, already on the block there. It must be for some accessory, but it's an 8 millimeter thread, so 8 millimeter bolt, and that happens to be right in line. That's nice and stout. So that's the return spring for the throttle cable. So it doesn't have to be overly stout because it its job is to close the throttle and pull that cable back snug. The spring up on the uh, pedal, that moves the rod, the pedal, and uh, makes that end work. Okay. Okay, I've got the cart up on a jack stand at the rear here. I put oil in the engine, I put uh, gas in the tank, and I'm going to try to start it for the first time. Um, it's uh, raining like hell uh, outside. It's been raining all day. It's going to rain tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to do the test drive on the next video. So this will be the end of the sixth video. And uh, I did manage to get a running and driving chassis. I just didn't drive it on this video. So uh, that will happen uh, at the beginning of the next video. So I'm going to start it up now and see how it runs. working like it should. All right, looking forward to driving this thing. It's going to be fun.